I didn't get my uh, my mom's support until last week. <laughs> Full episodes of The Peter Chow Show, including my conversation with Mortal Kombat's Ludi Lin, are now available wherever you listen to podcasts. Check it out. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Fuzhou, China. Fuzhou. Okay. And yeah. what was that upbringing like? Uh, what would you say, I guess, the difference between that in terms of the two cultures? Gosh, I don't know. I've been, I've been through so many cultures uh, yeah. in, in the different places I lived in. Uh, it was definitely very different. Yeah. Um, if I went back to my kid's self and told you know, told him that I'd be sitting here one day in front of several cameras yeah. um, chatting with you in in a Western country and be able to basically live live my dream. Yeah. Uh, you know, he would have said something. He would have yelled something like, Ayya, 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 Ayya. <laughs> We speak our own dialect, but it would have been something similar to that. But, but I guess speaking to that, that's a really good point because... I can't say that I had 100% all the way uh, my parents' sort of approval in terms of pursuing the arts, pursuing acting as a craft. It's not one of those, uh, I guess, in my households, the way that I was raised, and a lot of my Asian friends as well who are in the acting business, it's sort of an unforgiving industry, and it's very not stable, I guess, in a way, because it's not a 9-to-5 job, it's not engineering, it's not going to med school, it's the arts. And uh, my parents were like, yeah, Go ahead and do what you want, but you know they were also setting up realistic expectations that I could potentially fail within the industry. Did you get any of that? I guess when when you first started out. I mean, did did they for you? Did they set up unrealistic expectations, or did they set up Plan B, C, D, and E just in case? Plan B, and, C, and D. And you said it was an unforgiving industry, and yeah. were your parents forgiving for you? I guess my parents were. Well, I mean, as soon as uh, my dad was a chem prof. Um, so I failed chemistry in university. On and I purpose. think at that point, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was on purpose, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say that my dad, as soon as I failed chemistry, he was like, yeah, maybe chemistry isn't the gig, I guess, for you. Did you, did you experience a little bit of that or did you always have your parents, uh, support? Uh, I, I didn't get my, uh, my mom's support until last week. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> when she saw when she saw the trailer for Mortal Kombat, yeah. Um, and you know, I get support from time to time. Every time she sees something actually happening, or yeah. she visits set and she realizes it's real. And is uh, it still not real to them, or to I, your mom? I mean, it's still not real to me. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so I can understand why it's uh, hard to believe for her. Um, a lot of times, I just live my life like this is. This is pretty unreal because I think, you know, somewhere within me, that little boy that grew up in China yeah. still exists, right? And all this is just uh, even riding airplanes or, or traveling around the world. It's still, it's still quite a fantasy. Um, so I can, I can see why it's that way for her. I mean, look, parents are just worried. They are worried. You know? But do they have a reason to be worried? Especially now, I mean, kids that are, that are growing up in the, I guess, the age of social media where I guess you're comparing yourself with everything that you see through kind of a virtual wall. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty scary, I guess, in a way. People are like, kids are having phones when they're like eight, nine years old. Yeah. And they're, they're essentially saying that whatever they see on Instagram, oh, that's what I need to be, or those are the sort of standards that I need to live by. And that's, that's terrifying to me. And it's, the, it's one of the reasons, I guess, my wife and I haven't really, you know, started the idea of procreating yet because I, I feel also with COVID and everything, you know, it's, it's climate change. It's kind of a weird time yeah. to procreate. I mean, look, if you're um, worried, that just means one thing yeah. is that uh, we're getting old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the kids aren't worried. You know, when they're doing <laughs> this stuff, they're not worried. They're not going to be worried for a long no. time. And when we're playing video games when we were kids, we weren't worried. The yeah. parents are worried, and the parents, um, wherever you grew up in, like if you're in, if you're here in North America, and you're going through the '60s and '70s, going through, you know, free love and that hippie phase, they yeah. weren't worried. No, they were taking LSD and mushrooms. They weren't worried, <laughs> right? Their parents were worried. Yeah, but their parents, when they're going through like the whatever industrial revolution or the depression, they're just you know doing their own thing too. Yeah. So I say, don't worry. Um, <laughs> just that's all. All that your parents wants to hear is, yeah. don't worry, I'll be fine. 
I know what I'm doing. And sometimes it's hard for them to to get it in. You yeah. know, they just can't process. Yeah. But you just keep telling them and doing your thing. Uh, eventually, they'll get it. Just show yeah. them. I find it really tough, though, sometimes. Like, I, I, I got out of film school in 2007, not even as part of, like, the acting program. I really actually wanted to be behind the lens. And I remember when my mom asked me, it was like, hey, what's your game plan here? You know, after you graduate from film school, because film school isn't like, you know, like a traditional four year curriculum where you get a certificate, you get a bachelor's degree and then all the potential to kind of move from there. It's like a one year program, depending on the film school that you go to. And my my mom asked me, uh, you know, what's your plan? And I was like, maybe I'll work at Blockbuster. (laughs) Yes. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, she was really, really unhappy. I heard their stocks yeah. just went up recently. <laughs> <laughs> and then All those it. meme stocks. You yeah. into that? <laughs> it's great. It's really interesting. Retail investors, yeah. right? I mean, I don't mean to like you know really frame this conversation about meme stocks and retail investing, but it is a cool. It's like a, a change of the guard, I guess. It is a change of the guard. I read this one thing that said you know in the future it's gonna be, it's gonna be crypto versus AI. Yeah. Right. It's gonna be like central. Uh, like a benevolent leader type right where everything is calculated and you should just follow those rules or it's going to be crypto where everything is decentralized and everybody gets a voice yeah. right so there's always a battle between these things and you know we see what wins yeah and then now there's like nfts and moments and like nba top shots so like if you have sure. um i guess you can actually buy moments now and then there are some bands that are what, actually what do you mean up. what do you mean buy moments so like there's uh for example nba top shots has like it's like a sort of version of crypto and i'm sure somebody will, listening to this will probably correct me because i'm not 100 percent correct on this i'm just delving into they're it. just freaking out they're like, like this they're, guy's getting all they're wrong life moments so let's just say for example um you're into trading cards as a kid for example they're like live trading cards so an NFT essentially is, for example, a non-fungible token. So it, 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 it's a moment that happens within the NBA, for example, that you can buy. So let's just say if you buy a card and that card is, let's just say, a young up-and-coming player that does in like an amazing shot. You can buy that moment and you can resell it to someone once that player is one of the biggest players in the world. And it, and. It's actually pretty expensive. You get like a like a like a pack of cards or a pack of moments, and then you resell them to people within the market. It's it's like trading cards, but it's like trading cards, but non physical. Non physical, yeah. And it's like you can buy something for three hundred dollars, and you can trade it off for like a thousand. It's interesting. It's a very interesting time. Have you looked into this NFTs? No, but I feel like I have. I mean, the moments are in my head. Yeah. So, uh. They're mine to keep, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hang not, on to them for a while. I'm going to hang on to them. But that's the yeah. thing with trading cards, too. Like, even back in the day, when people did collect trading cards, they would keep the trading cards, right? And then, like, maybe in recent years, they decided that, hey, maybe this moment or this trading card is worth a million dollars, and they sell it, and they become millionaires just based on something that they collected at the time in which they didn't even think that it was worth any money. And I think that's what, I guess, the potential of NFTs are. But the way. person that's in that moment, the, the actual player that created that moment, they don't get anything. They can buy their own moment. They can. Well, they already have their own moment. <laughs> it's theirs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then they turn it into a virtual moment. So I guess that kind of is, uh, it is kind of weird, isn't it? No one's getting my moments, man. I want all my <laughs> moments.